Welcome, welcome, one and all. Winter Wizard here. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you my approach to painting storm shields. joining me today whoever you are and welcome to this little video of mine where I'm going to be showing you my approach to painting storm shields. So we're here in the frozen fortress it's cold and lonely uh, I'm joined as always by my friend and co-host Norwegian Troll Dimu. The sun is going down and we thought we'd do another installment of winter weather weaponry for you and in this episode like I said we're going to be looking at storm shields but winter weather weaponry I hear you ask what is that? So Winter Weather Weaponry is a little series that I'm doing where I'm painting up uh, some, some weapons for, for my Space Wolves army, the great company of Frostpoles. And each of these weapons I'm given a, a sort of individual take on, a, a nice individual theme. And the theme is uh, basically the, the more killy element of the weapon, whether it's the Thunder Hammer, a Lightning Claw, Frost Blade. Uh, I'm, I'm basically, I've come up with a colour scheme which I think is really cool and I think is unique. And it's inspired by the weather feature that they're named from. So... My lightning claws that I've painted, they look like bolts of lightning. Frost blades look like a shard of ice, thunder hammers, like cloudy storm cloud with flashes of lightning coming through. Anyway, so in this episode I'm going to be taking a look at, at how to paint my approach to painting a storm shield. Or should I say, more the, the sort of the main body of the shield, the more sort of um, defensive element of the shield. I've come up with a, with a method uh, of painting these, which I think represents, um, well, has a sort of stormy effect. and. That is what I'm going to be showing you today. So I've got a selection of paints over here. Uh, you could get away with this uh, with this method using uh, just a couple of greys, perhaps, or even or even one grey, a white, and that would probably do you actually. But I've got a selection of greys here and, so, and some other things going on as well. So I'll show you what I've got. I've got a base here, Mechanicus Standard Grey Citadel paints, of course. Uh, a layer, Dawnstone. And a lighter grey here, uh, Administratum grey, a layer again. Then I've got a shade of Noln oil, and a base of Corax white. Uh, this is a miniature paint brand, but if you're using your Citadel, this is just a, a lighter white, nice and bright. Uh, this would be a layer, uh, your white scar. And over here, uh, just a little gloss varnish, just for a, just for a little finishing touch. So this would be your Citadel Art Coat, or any of these... Any brands, they, they all seem to make their own version of a sort of paint on gloss varnish. So those are the colours that I'm, I'm probably going to be using all of them, but we'll see how we get on. And for the Storm Shield itself, we've got one of these here. I think this is a Blizzard Shield come from a... Yeah, it, it is in fact. It's a Blizzard Shield from one of the uh, from one of the Space Wolves Dreadnoughts boxes. But I'm going to paint it up in the exact same way that I paint my Storm Shield. But it's a nice size here, uh, so nice for you to be able to see. So I've got some lovely runes etched in here. So that's what we're going to be doing. And I've primed this already. Uh, I've actually used a army painter spray and I've used gun metal. So normally I would paint my space wolves grey, but silver is all just as good a place to start. And this is going to allow me to show you the difference between the, the colours when I when I paint them on. So started off with a grey, uh, with a silver, and um, that's as ready to go. Here we are, so we're zoomed in here, we're going to get started, so we've got the shield ready to go, I've got a wet palette over here, let me paint a wet palette and just a nice sort of, uh, this is a medium base brush from Citadel here, and we're going to start with the Mechanica Standard Grey. So we've got the grey ready to go here, like I said, I'm going to be painting more the, the sort of main element of the shield, so I'm going to be ignoring all these all these details, all these teeth and runes, and, and even the metallic edge. I'm just going to be painting the, the stormy effect on the shield, which, I, which I've been talking about. So, got some grey here. Throw that up onto the palette. Just give this a nice, smooth coat of grey to start with. Just all over the shield. Well, the, that killy element. Make that nice and smooth, and if you need to do a couple of coats, that should be, that's perfect. Two thin coats, says, as our favourite, as our favourite Duncan would say. So, there we go. So I'm going to do that. A couple of layers of this, and then we'll, it'll be the base colour, base colour down. Just 
Okay, so that's the Mechanica Standard Grey now nice and dry. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to give it a wash with the known oil. Uh, so we're just going to simply load this up onto the brush, a nice dollop of it, slop it on and slosh it all around. Working it into the the edges, particularly where between the uh, the bit of the the, uh, the body of the shield and where the metal metal edges is going to be, we want to get it nice and in there just to sort of really accentuate those those joints and stick it in the runes as well and around any details just to sort of try and separate all the all the other bits going on to the body of the of the shield there we go so clap this on give it a good wash and then let that dry nice and fully completely dry and then we can move on so we've got the known oil now dry and it's just made it's just to sort of help to sort of separate all the details and help the help it pop out as you can see next thing we're going to do we're going to start working on trying to create this um this stormy feel so what i'm trying to achieve here is it's kind of just a it's almost like it's hard to explain it's not stippled but it's almost kind of like a scribbled sort of swirly effect um trying to sort of represent and create the feel of like a swirling storm like a snowstorm or an, you can, you'll, see, you'll get the picture as we go ahead. So the first colour we're going to use is the Dawnstone. So we're going to get this open. And what we're going to do with this, we're going to load some of this onto our palette. And we're going to need some water. Because we're going to, I'm going to thin this down. I'm going to take a couple of blobs of water. Get this nice and thin. Nice and thin, so quite transparent. Not as thin as a wash. But really a glaze, but just just nice and watered down, so it's nice and smooth, very transparent, and like so. And what we're going to do with this is I'm going to be painting over all the grey bits that we've already done. I'm not going to go right into the edges. I'm not going to cover up the. I'm not going to go into the into the runes or any of the other details. But what I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to be. Well, I'll show you. I'm going to be creating an almost kind of just very lightly applying a little bit of time just between the between the main gap see like I said not going up to the edge I'm just kind of creating a scribble effect really as you can see blob a bit there Blob a bit in there, and it is quite rough. It's um, just just create a scribble, really. And if the paint's reasonably, it doesn't need to be watered down, down too much, but just enough so that when it dries, it's not going to look too too bold and brash. It's going to it's going to blend in quite nicely. But I'm essentially just scribbling some lines around all these details. Creating a bit of a swirlish, swirlish pattern. I'm really doing my best to try and explain this. It's um, it's a bit of a weird one, but like so. And go over again the little bits that you've that you've done. Could maybe, oh, that's right. yeah, like so. Creating a kind of blotchy, scribbly effect. And like I said, we've got the darker bits coming through, so I'm not covering everything. Uh, you can leave dip, you can leave little gaps between your between your scribbly splodges. We want a nice mix of colour, essentially. And we're going to be building up this up with the different light greys. And we're going to be doing a little bit less, a little bit less every time. So you're going to have the sort of the darker colour and the lighter, and there'll be less and less of the white, and there'll be more gaps, and your this sort of scribbly effect will sing through. Again, I'm I'm really trying to explain this, but you'll see as we go along. 
So I'm going to play with this a little bit more. Just add a little bit of that grey onto some of these areas, make that colour a little bit bolder. Just a little. And then when you feel like you're done playing, then we can stop. Let it dry nice and fully. Then we'll move on to the next one. So if I just zoom in quickly and give you a little bit of a closer look of what I've just done here. So you can see the darker greys on the outside. You see the base colour coming through. And you'll see the lighter grey in painted in a almost kind of scribbly, kind of splotchy, splodgy, swirly, stormy kind of feel. Like so. So and you can see it's kind of a little bit uh, maybe around here, you can see a little bit it's still a bit transparent, which is quite nice. It's gonna create that sort of swirly onslaught of weather and cloud and storm and snow. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna add another lighter colour of grey. But this time we're going to go back over the, the lighter bits that we've just done. So we're going to add a lighter colour on top of this, on top of the grey. But we're not going to cover up the whole thing. We're going to do this kind of swirly effect as well. But again, we're going to be a little bit more selective. We're not, we're not repainting this. We're not painting over the whole thing again. We're doing a little bit less. Uh, so you've got the darker colour, the lighter colour, lighter again. And after that we'll go lighter still. And uh, it's going to create this nice sort of patchy layered layered swirly effect so that's what we're going to do next so yes moving on exactly that we're going to bring out administratum grey now and we've got the palette here again and we're going to be doing the exact same thing so I'm going to get load some of this up a little bit pots a little bit empty load some of this up onto the palette a little bit of water just to thin that down Make sure it's going to go on nice and nice and thinly and almost transparent. Like so we're going to take some of this and we're going to add add to that swirly effect. So let's start at the top and again, like I said, I'm not covering the whole thing. Just adding a lighter shade, and it really is a kind of kind of scribbly design really like, that. like so just kind of use your discretion use your eye make sure that make sure the paint is nice and watered down so so it's kind of transparent it's not just going to look too bold and brash it's going to it's going to blend a little bit It'll be in there. Like I said, I'm not covering up all of the lighter grey that we've already done. I'm being selective. If you think of it like a puddle, maybe a puddle of colour. I'm adding a smaller swirly puddle inside that puddle. I don't know. It's a it's a tricky one to explain this. I'm not really sure how I came up with this idea, just wanting to create something that was kind of almost a bit like a stiffle effect kind of inspired, but that's more like a stabby kind of dot thing. This is more of a scrawly sort of swirl. Anyway, there we go. So and we're gonna add some a little bit more just to build that up. And again, if you add some more to, to brighten it up, be even more selective again. Do a little less than what you did before. Like so. A little bit more under here. There we go. So you get the idea. I'm going to play with this a little bit. And then uh, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so that's another layer of grey done. We're going to add some Corax white now. Now this is a really nice white. This is a really good colour because it's actually quite greyish. It's almost like it's, it's quite a greyish sort of white. I really like it anyway. Uh, it's going to work quite well. And we're going to use this quite sparingly. 
So again, get some on your palette, water it down, make it nice and transparent. Not too thin, just enough to get a nice sort of nice flow to it. A bit of transparency. There we go. So we're going to take some of this, and again, we're going to add some of this, and we're going to be nice and nice and sparing with this. We're going to. This is going to really sort of define some of the shapes. I'll say shapes um, define the kind of pattern and the details that we're painting around. Like so. Just blotting a bit of this on, scribbling a bit on. Like so. Going for the wrong colour. Like so. Put that on there, put that on there. Again, we're painting within the grey, but nowhere near as much as we have been doing. We're sort of really trying to create that swirly design now. A kind of blotchy mixture of greys and with a greyish white going through on top as the final thing. Put a little bit in that gap there. Around these. Like so. And that's what we've done. A little bit more perhaps. There we go. And I would say, you know, start do a little bit at a time and then build it up if you need to. Of course. Like with most things, it's far easier to put it on than it is to take it off. But there we go. So I'm gonna have a little play with this just for a minute, and then I'll show you the show you the result. And then we're gonna then the next thing after that that we're gonna do. You could leave it like this. You could leave those rooms nice and dark. Uh, what I personally quite like to do is I actually like to make them really bright and white. Uh, that's what I like to do. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We're going to tackle that afterwards. But I'll play with this for a minute, and then I'll give you a closer look, and then we'll have a look at the runes. Okay, there we go. So I finished with the Corex white, and there you can see the design. I hope you can see the kind of swirly, patchy effect going on here. It's not a smooth, solid color. It's kind of Perhaps you don't always notice it from a bit of a distance, but when you sort of get a little bit closer, you notice that it's not, you know, there's something else going on there. And like I said, just trying to create a sort of stormy kind of inspired feel here. But that's that. And the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to brighten up these runes. And then to do that, we're going to go back to the Corax White. Again, we're going to thin that down nicely so it flows really well off the brush. I'm going to be careful not to overload the brush because this is where it could get a bit messy and run away. What I'm going to do, using a nice thin brush, I'm going to feed, feed that white into those runes. And it really doesn't matter if you get a bit of this white sort of on the edge around the shape. Because that's fine, it's going to create a little bit of a glow. But this is what you want to do. Get this right all the way into those runes. Make them nice and bright, nice and dark. And yeah, as you can see there, I'm sort of going a little bit on the edge there. Around the, out of the top. That's fine. It's good even. That's what we want. Not too much. We don't want to overdo that, but... Just a little bit. Probably find the brush will naturally do that as you're trying to get this white in there anyway. So there we go. So I'm going to pick out all the runes like this, get some white all the way into those gaps. A little bit, just a smidge around the edge. So I'm going to do that now. Pick out all of these and we'll move on. There we go, so I've gone and added some white into the runes. I've really sort of, you know, tried to flood it, flood them with paint. Really sort of pour it in there. Make them really bold and dark. Or bright, rather. Make them really bold and bright. And I have painted 
a reasonable amount on the edges actually just to sort of really help those help those ruins pop make them quite a feature and I've done a couple of coats of this white like I said just to make them real bold so once you're happy with it when you feel like they're bold and I feel like they are they I feel like they're nice I feel like they stick out quite nicely um, we still got that sort of the mixture of greys and grey colours around them and then you got these lovely sort of white runes sort of real, as a real feature almost like the runes are you know they are the essence of the storm so it's, it's really nice I think uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make sure that I'm happy with this make sure they're nice and neat and bold and then once we're happy with the quality of the runes what we're going to do we're going to bring out the the lighter white whether this is a uh, whether this is white scar or just any other sort of white really it's just got to be nice and bright lighter than the Corax white it's so like it said I've got a bit on my palette here actually the Corax white is quite a greyish sort of white and you see the difference in the two tones here next to each other hopefully you can see that on the camera much lighter much brighter so we're going to use some of this and we're going to pour that into those runes and I'm going to avoid the edges this time uh, the edges are supposed to be the glow they don't need to be too bright uh, but I'm going to try and pour some of this just into the runes themselves just into the gaps into the sort of trenches of those and really try and lift those up make them really nice and you will get a little bit of this on the edges but that's not too much of a problem you can do a little bit more around the edge just to really help the, the letters stick out with the Corax white and then leave the inside and a little bit whatever just sort of dip sort of spills out to the real brighter white and that's just gonna give it a couple of dimensions make it really nice and bright make it a real feature something else to point out here you see this rune here or on the letter R I've actually the like the little triangle in the middle of the R there I've actually painted that completely white as well I feel like that helps the whole thing just to stick out looks a little bit strange with that slightly different so there we go and you might want to do a couple of layers of this Well, that's it just pouring that white in there and you can see I hope you can see that 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 one's just got that little bit of an extra glow a little bit of extra brightness to it well, that's what we're aiming for we want these runes to be like I just said the essence of the storm we want them to glow to shine you know. so that's what I'm gonna do and it's just a steady hand and a sharp brush or a fine brush just to get that white in there so I'm going to work around this work on this and then uh, and then we'll move on and there we go then so you can see I filled the runes with the, with the nice white really sort of just flooded it in there to get those that shiny whiteness kept a little and you know keeping the Corax white on the outskirts if you feel like you've gone too heavy on the outskirts if you feel like the runes are maybe a little bit chunky you could take some of your greys and just sort of blend that back in you know uh, blend that white back out with a little bit of grey I'm um, reasonably I think I'm pretty happy with that uh, what I'm gonna do now is uh, wait for that to fully dry make sure that I'm really happy with it and then the last little touch that we're gonna do is we're going to add a little bit of gloss varnish uh, just into those runes just into those trenches where we've made nice and bright just to give it that shine that glow and uh, that's what we're going to do so I'm going to wait for this to dry and then we'll add some of that okay here we go then so I'm going to open up the gloss varnish and this is literally if you've never seen anything like this before it's literally just it's just a varnish and you use it just like paint really so I'm going to take some of this and just poke that into those into those into those runes just a little bit and you'll see when it dries that it'll just give it a nice bit of a sheen bit of a shine just really sort of helps to accentuate that glowing effect you really don't have to do this but I think it's a nice touch a little bit of gloss varnish can just can just really add to 
add to a little feature. You know. It's really nice. So I'm going to add some of this. Make sure I'm nice and happy with it. And then we'll wrap this video up from there. Okay, there we go then. So the gloss varnish is now nice and dry. I don't know if you'll be able to pick it out on the camera, but there's a little bit of a shine, a little bit of a sheen going on just in those runes. And and that's us finished. So I hope that kind of made some sense to you. I hope you kind of I hope you can see this the result that I've got here. Like I said, inspired by the weather feature. So the storm, I've tried to create a sort of swirly, onslaughty, stormy effect. Um, you know, and, and I, I'm pleased with it. But anyway, this is just my approach, and I, I hope you like it. So uh, let me know down in the comments what you think. And there we go. There we go. That is my approach to painting storm shields. Um, taking an influence from the weather feature that they're named from. Ah, and there we have it then. So that's another installment of Winter Weather Weaponry, where in this episode I showed you my approach to painting storm shields. This is an actual fact, well, for the time being at least, uh, this is the final episode of Winter Weather Weaponry. So if you've seen the other, if you've seen the rest of the episodes in the series, I hope you've enjoyed them. And if you haven't, maybe you'd like to go and check them out. Uh, I've done thund thunder hammers, frost blades, and lightning claws as well, showing you my approach to painting all of those, taking an inspiration from the weather feature <laughs> that they're named from. So hope you'll go and check those out. And well, if you've enjoyed the video today, then a like and a comment would be very very much appreciated it really helps the channel and if you'd like to see more of what goes on here inside the frozen fortress then perhaps you'll also consider becoming a subscriber and once again whoever you are thank you very very much for joining me today i'm winter wizard that's dimu and for now keep it frosty <laughs>